Hi there. Let's take a look at the Wenger Titanium Line Uli Steck Special Edition. Now, Uli Steck, if you're not familiar with him, was a world-class Swiss mountaineer. And he used the past tense because he did die this last past April 2017 doing what he loved, climbing. Um, but he was known as the Swiss machine for his efficient style of fast and light climbing. He helped pioneer that style of alpineering and uh, he set a lot of records and won a lot of awards. Uh, among his many accomplishments, he set speed records on um, the North Face Trilogy in the Alps. He climbed all the uh, classic problems in the Alps, the North Face of the Eiger, uh, the Matterhorn, the Grand Jurasse. He did all those solo and set speed records um, using no ropes. He later came back and reclaimed his um, record on Eiger. He climbed it finally in a time of 2 hours, 22 minutes, and 50 seconds, which is incredible. And when I was a kid, uh, people that climbed the Eiger, I remember, you know, it took a couple of days, a couple of people at least, and ropes. So, uh, pretty amazing. He also soloed the uh, south face of Annapurna in the Himalayas, which is a very uh, amazing and dangerous climb. He did that 28 hours round trip from base camp to summit and back. Uh, one other notable thing he did that I wanted to say uh, is he did 82 summits in 62 days. He, what he did was he decided to climb all the peaks in the, in the Alps, over 4,000 meters, and get between them on human power, so he bicycled between them. Pretty amazing. So yeah, he did die this April. He was 40 years old. He was on an acclimatizing uh, climb on Everest. Um, he had climbed Everest before, he'd summited Everest before in 2012 without oxygen, and he was uh, working on a new problem, and he was just up there practicing, and he fell from the west ridge about 300 meters from the summit. Apparently he fell over a thousand meters, and uh, they did recover his body, but no one really knows what happened to him because he was you know, climbing alone, and he really wasn't on a very um, technical section. But uh, as he often said, he was a climber in his heart, so he died doing what he loved to do. He knew what the risks were, and uh, he fully accepted those. It was his life, so he can do with it like what he wants. Um, but people like him show other men what is possible. Anyway, so uh, let's get on with taking a look at the knife. It comes in this presentation box, and um, when you open it up, you get included with the knife um, a all-weather neoprene pouch that the knife can go in and uh, two bit drivers uh, that can ride in the pouch and can be used with the knife. You also get a pamphlet uh, with a little information about Uli Steck and uh, the knife. There's a picture of him and there's a picture of the, um, what do they call it, really the, the trilogy in the Alps there. Uh, there are actually three knives in this titanium line. Uh, the titanium one, which is just the blade and its uh, um, integral tools and uh, the bit drivers. And then the titanium two, which included a wood saw. And then the Yuli Steck Special Edition, which has several other tools, which I'll show you. But you also get a uh, DVD that chronicles um, his climbs on those three classic Alp peaks. I have yet to watch that. I'm looking forward to it. This knife came out as a special edition in 2011. Um, it was a, a year in development and it went through 10 different prototypes. Wenger worked closely with Uli Steck to develop this because he wanted to, it designed to work with his climbing gear. And he actually used this not only in camp but it accompanied him on a few climbs. I'll include some pics at the end um, of him demonstrating the uses of this knife, you know, as they relate to his sport. But the first thing you'll notice about it is um, the titanium scales. And they're really very nice. Uh, they are grooved, so they uh, actually have a pretty good grip. They are thick. They uh, are used as a structural component of the knife. They're pinned through with these domed pins, but the pins are recessed. And then you have his name and uh, logo deeply embossed in one side. On the other side, you'll see uh, the words Wanger Titanium and the Wanger symbol here, which uh, acts as a 
liner lock release. This is a locking blade. Uh, this, this knife has been a little bit controversial because of its shape, but you have to understand it's a multi-tool as much as it is a knife. And so you see here a huge arched blade with three hexagonal cutouts. Those are, for, those are wrenches. They're made to be used with uh, ice axes or other gear. I believe they are um, 7, uh, 10, and 13 millimeters. I know Uli Steck used this with his Petzl gear. Um, because of the holes in the blade, though, it can operate as a you know, one-hand opening blade. Uh, Wanger says this blade is 50% thicker than a standard Wanger Swiss Army knife blade because it has to have the strength to uh, loosen and tighten bolts. Uh, if you notice, there are symbols etched into the blade that show you the direction that you're supposed to turn the nuts. So you want to make sure that you know, you're always applying pressure against the back of the knife, not against the liner lock. So you, if you put it on the bolt this way and you want to tighten it, you want to turn it this way. If you need to loosen it, you need to flip it over and turn it this way. That way it can't collapse against the liner lock. The liner lock is fairly sound. It operates both as a kind of a coin press and also this innovative thing that Wanger came up with. You can press through this nice emblem right here. Um, this is proud enough and this is big enough that you're supposed to be able to use it with gloves. When you close the knife you'll notice um, it has a stop at about the 60% position to keep it from nipping your fingers. Um, it is a partially serrated blade. You know, the intention there is that you can uh, cut ropes and straps with it, but it's uh, sharpened here at the end, and it's a very, as I said, a very thick blade. You can see how they've beveled it on this side here. Also integral to the blade, you'll notice this little symbol here. Perhaps it's on the other side. Yeah, that uh, looks like a screw and that's because there's a flat spot right here on the back side of the knife so this can be used with um, very large screws or something that you know you might need to tighten or loosen that had a big flat opening like that in addition to the blade uh, on this Uli Steck model you have a very nice stainless steel file and saw he wanted this to be able to sharpen his ice axes and his crampons. And he actually would do that in base camp with it. Now that doesn't lock, but you do also have Wanger's patented screwdriver cap lifter with the pressure lock system. So when you press on this, press down hard on a screw, it, it locks and won't close. It will only close when there's no pressure on it. It also has a wire bender. And then on this side we have a can opener, but as we know this can also come in very handy as a scraper or a cutter. It does have a key ring, no clip or anything like that, but as a key ring um, there's pictures of him actually using it with a carabiner through it and he clips it onto his belt. Also in the handle you'll notice this uh, hexagonal cutout. This will accept any one quarter inch bit driver and the set comes with two a Phillips and a flat, but you could put any kind of a bit driver in there you need for your gear. Let's say you uh, snowboard or you do something different that, that you need some kind of hex wrench or something, you could take that with you. Yeah, so that, it doesn't click in there real tight, but there is enough of a pressure click where it won't fall out. This uh, knife is an 85 millimeter uh, length closed, which is standard to all Wanger's smaller knives. Um, it's 101 grams, which is uh, 3.6 ounces, and uh, that's actually pretty good given how thick the blade is and how much steel componentry there is in here. If you'll notice on the back, there's just one aluminum liner there. Uh, the liner up against the blade is steel, and of course all the springs are steel. So it's mostly steel for strength, just that one aluminum liner. I think that's between um, that's between the opening layer and the metal saw file. So you know you have a, a stainless steel liner lock, and then you also have a, a stainless steel liner up against that blade. 
I think the reason they went with the titanium is that if they didn't, this knife would have been pretty heavy. So uh, with this big blade and these other tools, they went with titanium and that kept the weight down to 3.6 ounces. Titanium is an expensive material and as you can see from the construction of this knife, it's not your typical Swiss Army knife. So this was a very expensive knife for Winger to build. To build. It was a little bit out of their sandbox and has a lot of custom things in it. Um, so it was very expensive when it retailed back in 2011. It retailed for $200. So I don't know how many they produced, but probably not a lot because they probably didn't anticipate selling a whole lot at $200. Okay, that's a look at the Wenger Titanium Line Uli Steck Limited Edition. Um, Uli Steck was a remarkable man, and this is a very innovative knife. Thanks for watching.